not even just in, you know, my motherhood where I discovered a few things that was like, hmm, I think I, I just need to, I, I'm used to doing everything for myself. Why is that? Again, it's from the single motherhood period where it's like, okay, I need to organize this or I need to do this or this is what needs to be done. Um, So when someone's even offering a gesture to help me, it's like, no, I've got it. You know, I don't want that support. I need to be more open to people wanting to support me, I think. I was like, I would say, because obviously I'm working and changing all of that. But I was like, I, I've got it. I would pay for it. I would drive us there. That is a lot of what I I was doing, which again, it's just constantly putting me in a masculine role to, to be a leader, to be not necessarily controlling because I'm, I'm very mindful of that. I don't want to control anyone else's life or people around me who are genuinely showing me love, mm -hmm. but to be open to someone else taking leadership or taking the will for the most part. Welcome to the Dr. Dab Show. Today I have a beautiful special guest from far, far away, Chanel Boateng. Welcome, Chanel. Hey, Michelle. Welcome. <laughs> welcome to California, first of all. Thank you. All I the way from here. London, right? Yes. Thank you for coming to the show. Really, really happy to have you here. And so many of my viewers love your content and have been asking for this collaboration. So I'm just really grateful that you were willing to come down. I mean, I'm so excited when you reached out. And I mean, we went to do it, I guess, last year. But timing, God's timing is always right. So <laughs> yes, it is. Super excited. Well, I'm <laughs> a huge supporter of your channel. I love your content. You are a content creator. You do lifestyle content, yeah. empowerment videos. And it has definitely blessed my life just seeing your personality and the things that you share with us. Yeah. So how long have you been on YouTube? I've been on YouTube for a total of 10 years because um, I had an old channel that was a very amateur and a bit rubbishy. <laughs> but then rebrands like the following year. Um, so I'll say a total of 10 years, 10, 10, 11 years, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe wow. this is the 11th or even 12th. I've lost count. It feels that long. And it's something that I love. Mm -hmm. When you love what you do, you kind of even sometimes lose track of it all, isn't it? But it's been at least a decade at the very least. And your channel is geared towards women specifically. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want people to take from your channel when they watch it? I want people to feel that they're coming to an escape. Um, people love seeing my life vlogs and what I get, I, like, I get up to daily or weekly or whatever the case. Um, I also have shared quite an intense, like, um, profile of my transformational journey in various, um, forms. So my transformation through my makeup, fashion, lifestyle, literally. And, you know, I've been through quite, you know, some turbulence, you know, in my life um, over the years. And um, I think it does give a little inspiration and hope for women who just want to make a turnaround in their lives as well. And that's the goal, really, to let people understand that um, it's possible to make that transformation and, you know, give the, themselves the quality lifestyle that they deserve. That's so true. And yeah. it, it really is important. It's nice to be able to see someone doing it. Yeah. Yes. Now, where are you from originally? I'm Ghanaian. You're Ghanaian, just like me. Have you ever lived in Ghana? Never lived there. Okay. No. Have you visited? I have. The last time I went was 15 years ago. That's a long time ago. Okay. I'm returning, <laughs> literally, in a couple of months, and I'm so excited. You're going to have a blast. It's so much fun. Yeah, apparently it's really changed in Accra. Um, my, my mom's from Kumasi, and my dad's from Brukum, like Bra Hafo. So. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, best of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, capitals are craft. We're not any bit a girl or anything, but that's where everybody's at. So family and stuff. So I can't wait. You're going to have a great time. <laughs> now, Chanel, I know that you have commented on my content before on femininity, things that I've talked about in terms of embracing yourself as a woman. What have you experienced in your femininity journey? Is that something that you have leaned towards recently? Is it something that you think about? Is it something that impacts your life, your femininity as a woman? It has. Like, I didn't realize how important it was. You kind of just carry on just doing whatever and being whoever. 
but who are you? And I think going on like discovering this femininity journey, I would call it, has really made me see who I am and who I'm comfortable with being. Mm -hmm. There's been a huge part of my life where, you know, there was a point where I was a single mother um, and, you know, you automatically take that leadership role and you become like head of the household, obviously looking after the kids, et cetera. At the time I had one son mm -hmm. um, and I kind of lost my feminine grace, I feel. And I didn't even realize the the, the importance of having it as, as a mother, I want to be that nurturing, loving mother. And if I've lost my femininity, how do I become her? So when I discovered your channel and a few other channels that I've seen, like Karina Lude, yeah. um, it's really made me kind of say, this is really look deep into myself and, and realize that this is, this is who I'm kind of fighting to be to get back to being because I was a, I've always been a feminine girly girl with Barbie dolls mm -hmm. and all of that. But when life hits you mm -hmm. and it becomes real, I wouldn't say I've been like like completely masculine, but you just become so assertive, so serious, so you know strong. <laughs> it's nice to have strength, but what kind of strength? Um, and I had to really assess that with myself and um, discovering that part of where I need to be has been very, very, very important to me. And obviously your channel has been a massive, massive help for me in that journey. Thank God. You're right. As a mother, even if you're not a single mother, but especially when you're a single mother and you have yeah. to play both roles, it can be challenging to stay in your femininity. Yeah. And nurturing is so important for your child to be able to see you as a safe space and to be able to just like transmit that love into your baby, Absolutely. into your child. And so a lot of women don't realize how important it is to be in their feminine as a mother and struggle with being a nurturing woman, mm -hmm. especially after life's hardships. So in your life, what are some ways that you honor your femininity as a mother and just as Chanel? So I think when I started therapy last year, it kind of did pull out all of the, I wouldn't say the odd things about myself, but the things that I, I wasn't quite comfortable with. Um, so and give me an example of one of the things that you weren't comfortable with how angry I could be sometimes, how assertive I could be sometimes, how bossy I could be sometimes. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that that's appropriate to 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 put on my, my children, you know? Um, and so when I realized that these are the discoveries like through tr past trauma that were affecting my life, I started to address that. So if I really wanted to start working on my emotions because anger, potentially was quite um, a thing that was affecting me. And I didn't actually realize, like, I just would get, like, if a situation happened, it would make me upset. And I would really tap into it and I would stay there. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily quite feminine. And it's not to say as a, as a feminine woman, you don't have, you can't have an emotion. Of course. Or you can't get angry or upset. Oh, absolutely. But how? Um, me realizing how I'm going to, I guess, react to a situation mm -hmm. is the thing that I really wanted to tap into and really work on. That's beautiful because you're right. As a feminine woman, it's actually the opposite. You honor your emotions as a feminine woman. Right. It's actually more masculine to keep it in and to yes. pretend like you don't have them. But when you are honoring your emotions, there's a way that you're able to process it and just be in tune with how you're behaving, how it's affecting other people and just how you feel. Because if you were dealing with anger, it came from a wound. It came from something. Yeah. Like you said, there was trauma. There was something that needed to be addressed. And it's just a side effect of that trauma for you to lash out or to, to be that way. And, you know, sometimes as a mom, especially you know, having boy, yeah. you know, oh. I, I, you're like Two chasing them, them right? <laughs> you're chasing them. You're yelling. You're just trying to keep the order. And it's like if you're not paying attention, you will be yelling all day long or you yeah. will be in that mode all day long. It's like bringing yourself back down. Absolutely. And also it's, it's not even just in, you know, my motherhood where I discovered a few things that was like, hmm, I think 
I, I just need to, I, I'm used to doing everything for myself. Why is that? I don't know. I think, again, it's from the single motherhood period where it's like, okay, I need to organize this or I need to do this or this is what needs to be done. Um, so when someone's even offering a gesture to help me, it's like, no, I've got it. You know, I don't want that support. I've, and you know, it, 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 it's, it, I don't, I want to say it's a turn off, but it's kind of like, it didn't, I need to be more open to people wanting to support me. I think, I think it was very important because a masculine man for the most part normally takes the leadership role, isn't it? In a household, perhaps absolutely in a marriage, perhaps which is lovely, not to say the woman should be in the corner somewhere in the kitchen just doing that, unless that's who you <laughs> wanna be, that's fine. But that tends to be the position of a man. But I'm like, I was like, I would say, because obviously I'm working and changing all of that. But I was like, I, I've i got it. I would pay for it. I would drive us there. I would, that is a lot of what I I was doing which again, it's just constantly putting me in a masculine role to, to be a leader, to be not necessarily controlling because I'm, I'm very mindful of that. I don't wanna control anyone else's life or people around me who are genuinely showing me love, mm -hmm. but to be open to someone else taking leadership or taking the will for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? It does sound like an issue with control. Even though you may not be trying to control them, mm. you're trying to control your life. You're trying to control yes. what comes in, what goes out. And it's a little bit deeper than you probably realize, but it really does come down to trust, control, and self-image, your, your feelings about yourself and what you think you're worthy of, what you think other people may bring with their help and with their advice and with, mm -hmm. you know, even having someone else drive, like you said, I'll drive. I usually don't like my husband driving. I mean, I will, <laughs> I, I will let him drive because he's going to drive. But the whole time I'm like, no, no, turn, like I'm turning around yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to an anxiety thing. I right. think as well in my discovery mm -hmm. is I was, I still do kind of have a bit of anxiety if I'm being honest, but I think it was a lot of just, being anxious mm -hmm. of something going wrong um, because I'm just always used to being on my own, taking care of things and doing a good job of it. <laughs> right. you know? And so when you know you're good at what you're, you're mm -hmm. doing, like where's the room for someone else to come in? But, you know, I'm opening up for, you know, a lot of things. I wanna learn from other people. I want to hear something I've never heard before. And this is where even your channel and various other female femininity channels has been helpful to me because sometimes you don't stop to listen. You keep on going thinking that you know it all and, oh, this is me and I'm fine. But then someone would say something, are you sure you're okay with that? Are you happy? That's right. And I think that's it as well for the most part. I, I actually wasn't happy with constantly having to take or being in a, you know, boss babe mode and especially my career and and what we do is kind of like constant it's constant and uh you're forever kind of like right let's sit let's get put it on my desk what we got today i think i mean it's important to have that to run the business mm -hmm. but are you bringing that home to yes i don't want to bring that home to my family to pick up that driving boss babe woman vibe in my home where we should have constant love and constant nurturing and you know constant good energy and vibes and you don't want to bring it home to yourself either because yeah. people who have this sort of lifestyle it's hard for them to sleep it's hard for them to relax it's hard yeah. for them to take care of themselves it's hard for them to do things for themselves they feel guilty they feel like they are they're not busy so they're they're useless and it's not good for you either yeah. now you mentioned that 2021 was a very difficult year for you yeah. 2021. 2022? It's been a few difficult it's, years. It's been a few different. Okay. <laughs> I remember you specifically saying that, but perhaps it's been multiple years. I mean, yes. 2021 
was like, where are we in 2023? Now I've actually lost <laughs> track of time. Because it's going by so fast. But yes. There have been a lot of yes, different things happening. Yes, it was. I probably did mention that. Um, yes, now I remember. Sorry. You see, okay. a lot has happened. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, 2021, I think it was a lot of discoveries for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of discoveries. And especially in the business world. Okay. I was doing fantastic in terms of revenue and money making that year but there was some issues perhaps with you know who I was working with and stuff um and that affected me on a personal note mm -hmm. so one of the biggest things I had to actually do that year was to to stop one of my one of my main revenue <laughs> companies so that I can focus on bringing Chanel back to Chanel because it was completely taking me off course Dang. So yes, that 21, 2021 was a year of discoveries. And me. then 2022. Woo, 2022, I would say, is the year I literally said, I'm going to put things into action mm -hmm. or at least enjoy myself or start to enjoy myself, myself as in the individual. What do I like? What is it that I, 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 I am interested in? Well, what brought that about? <sighs> Therapy. Therapy. <laughs> yes, okay. therapy again. It's, 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 I started it early 2022, okay. and just having those conversations with my therapist on on what I really want for myself and and where I see myself happy mm -hmm. is where I'm like, okay, well, if you want to be happy, you need to take action. And this is where I started, you know, solo things. Even married at the time, um, solo spa dates, solo <laughs> dinner dates. Um, going on holiday on my own, literally different countries. And because I didn't think that I was getting that from home at all. When you did these solo trips, especially yeah. seeing that you have two sons and how old are your boys? They are 13 and five. Okay. <laughs> so having been a mother, sometimes you feel guilty about doing things for yourself. But when you're doing things like taking solo trips and things of that nature, how did you allow yourself to enjoy those things without feeling guilty that you have these children at home? I'll be honest, I'm still struggling with that a little bit because I was even saying to my friend yesterday that I think my long-term goal is to be at home with them. I love being a mom and being at home with them. This is why getting my, you know, femininity in check mm -hmm. is so important because that is my goal. I always would, you know, have a business or businesses and mm -hmm. run those, but I've do see myself in the long run being at home and just being a mother. It makes me so fulfilled. So yes, um, I think for me, cause I've got a great support system as well. That's my good. mom, I've got an amazing child minder as well. Great. Um, knowing that they're taken care of and, and I, I do as much organization and putting in place before I, I travel off somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, it does help, you know, the guilt pressure come down a bit but I'm always still thinking oh, what they're doing right now it's their time yet <laughs> of course you I mean you're a mother will. and I'm just like oh I shouldn't have come perhaps I should have stayed with them well and they're they're <laughs> old they enough to understand them. yeah you know you call them and they're actually fine like mm -hmm. yeah, mom. <laughs> yeah they're old enough there are certain ages where things like that wouldn't be so appropriate for those of you listening I mean if your child was just born or if they're a certain age it's not it's not appropriate if yes. you don't have to, you know, yeah. but at a certain age, it's okay. Yeah. And like you said, you have people who you trust. Now, something that you shared in your channel that is a major life shift for you is your recent file for divorce. Yes. So how have you been processing and dealing with this massive change in your life emotionally? There are different types of emotions that I've had to experience and so much just realizations and just discoveries. How long were you married for? Eight years. Eight years. Okay. Yeah. It's a long time. Yeah, it's quite a while, isn't it? <laughs> you don't realize. It feel like it went very quickly, weirdly enough. Mm -hmm. Initially, I was just very adamant to do what, what I felt was right. I was very upset and disappointed. So I guess initially my, my um, reaction was that really a, a mm -hmm. little bit, I wouldn't say overly emotional, like tearful. Mm -hmm. And this is another thing as well that made me realize that I needed to work on my femininity hood is I was, I barely cried. Really? I barely cried. Like 
before I even filed for divorce. I was just so hardcore and very much direct. Let's do this. Like, I, I read, there was points where I'll be like, it's been a month. Have I even cried? You know? How long did it take from the point where you decided that you wanted to file for divorce to doing it? Like, was there a process of time where you were thinking and pondering and wondering? There was lots. And okay. prayer and, and prayer. counseling. Okay. And, you know, speaking to my spiritual leader, mm -hmm. um, my mom, you know, the pastors who literally married us. You know, I, I, had, I had to go through all that therapy before I said, okay, the, 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 the next conversation's with a lawyer. Um, so it, it took, I would say it took, because people wouldn't even know this, but it, it kind of started in, in 2021, <laughs> that, that, that crazy shift year. Okay. Um, and we tried to work on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there was a huge realization that this is it. This is what you're gonna get. This is the 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 best you're gonna get, and it mm. wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. I want to say satisfactory because life isn't perfect, mm -hmm. but I did feel that I was majorly missing a huge part of me, and um, I discovering your own self is fantastic, but when you're married, your other your partner needs to bring help you bring that part of you out as well, mm -hmm. and I didn't think that that would ever come mm. um so mm -hmm. in fact I know it was never gonna come so I had to, to 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 work and just decide for myself where I needed to see myself to to find the happiness I'm looking for so yes initially it was very much obviously a mix of emotions um anger sadness anger but very quickly and I mean very quickly happiness setting mm. for me um, I felt very content and satisfied with my decision. And people were seeing the change. Chanel, you look so happy. Chanel, you look so positive. Mm -hmm. Chanel, you're glowing. Like, what is going on? You seem so, so, so happy. And i that is who I am right now. I'm, I'm very, very happy, content, excited about life and stuff. Um, and perhaps people did see perhaps before that, that I wasn't so happy. Mm -hmm. Now, divorce is such a intense and sensitive topic. Mm -hmm. But when we think about marriage in terms of being a child of Christ, mm -hmm. when you're in a marriage that is tough, because marriage will always be tough, right? I mean, I think everyone who's married knows yeah. that marriage is going to be tough at some point. We're called in the, in the word to serve our husbands and they're supposed to be doing the same with us which is what you felt like you weren't getting mm -hmm. but at what point did you start to feel like you know what I am doing everything that I'm supposed to do I'm pouring everything in but this is something I can't be in because there's that notion of well it's not about you being happy right I mean I know that sounds really bad yeah <laughs> but when you think about it from a biblical point, not from like the world, right? Yeah. Just from God's view. It's not about you being happy. It's about you serving your husband and serving God in your marriage, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that notion that comes in. How does a person know, okay, you know what? This is not going to be okay with me anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, because of that that dynamic, which is really hard. But I, I've i heard women whose maybe their husbands are on drugs or they're always out of the house or they're constantly cheating. And it's like this question of, do I stay in this? Do I endure this? Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. is this something that, you know what, at a certain point in time, enough is enough? I think that's what it came to. Enough is enough because I was building myself. Mm -hmm. I was building myself and I was building everyone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was not, it wasn't good enough. Okay. We're supposed to build together. I feel that that's how it's really supposed to be in the Christian marriage. Mm -hmm. And if the other party isn't willing or doesn't think it's important enough to mm -hmm. pour into the other, right. and it just, drains and soaks everything out of you 
And even after all of the methods you take to hoping to get to the, pay, the, the point where it should be in the eyes of God and there is nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sh I, if I'm being honest with you, I've throughout the, the duration of my marriage, I just said, this is the normal, but it actually wasn't. That's, I don't, I don't even, I don't feel that in the eyes of God, this was, this was good enough. If this was, was it a healthy Christian marriage? Right. I mean, I can't speak for God, right? but I know that there is more fulfillment that should have come from both of us towards each other mm -hmm. that wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I felt quite lonely a lot mm -hmm. in the marriage. In the marriage. And people will never know that because of course I do lifestyle vlogs and he was in a lot of my content and stuff like that. Um, and people even warmed to, to, you know, seeing our dynamic and stuff, although, you know, it's not a couples or a family channel. It really is me <laughs> and my life, but right. everyone who was in my life was a part of it. Mm -hmm. You probably wouldn't detect that, but I mean, it's the internet. <laughs> That's yeah. the truth. It's the internet. And right. when the doors and the cameras are off, you know, and it gets real, it's certain discoveries that, you know, it's just like, I don't even want to hurt you anymore. Like, I'm not, I'm not giving you what a wife should be given. And I'm going to be completely honest in saying that. I'm not giving what I should even be giving. And you were aware of that? I am. I, I became aware of that, yes. Um, and I tried to, especially in the beginning, funny enough. Mm -hmm. But I felt like, as I said, for the whole, the whole course and the duration of it, it wasn't... <sighs> It was just very bland and there was a huge lack of fulfillment. What is it that you wish you would have known before getting married? There's a couple of things. I think everyone has a duty and a role to play for each other and for themselves. I kind of think we did this falling to, to you just, not even just us specifically, a lot of people just fall into whatever, not even just because of love, but perhaps just to, almost tick the box mm -hmm. that main thing about you know fa femininity fa feminine versus masculinity I think that specific role each person should be that mm -hmm. and play it well mm -hmm. sometimes the roles may need to be reversed mm -hmm. and that's completely understandable mm -hmm. depending on the situation the circumstances there may be something that a woman is better at doing than the man vice versa so you might just have to switch roles real quick or in a circumstance where the man can't be there or the woman can't be there. You have to obviously switch roles and woman might have to just be the, the boss of the house for a little bit or whatever the case. Yes. But in the eyes of God, again, when it gets down to it, I think it's very important for people, for, for each individual to understand who they should be for each other and for the family, the wider family, you know, or the children, etc. Did you go to counseling before getting married with him? We did a very quick counseling, which I don't even think it was it was successful. Okay, because that can sometimes help. It affected us. I, I, I think, yeah, it was a very, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. Now, yeah. you talked about your relationship with God and yeah. coming to him with these things. How did God help you through this time in your life in terms of thinking about the divorce, filing, and then where you are now? How has God been there for you and what has your relationship with God been like? I would say right now, my mm -hmm. relationship with God is the best that it's ever been. And I even feel like, wow, I, I wish I was able to pour into my relationship with God, perhaps in the marriage as much as I am now. But for some reason, my spirit man is just really lifted. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Like almost constantly. It's prayer. It's it's having that atmosphere. It's just really taking the things of God very, very, very seriously. Seriously in a nice way, though. Not seriously in a way where it's religious and it's just uncomfortable. But <laughs> right. in a way where I'm just feeling free. I feel very free. I think even 
my marriage had me bound as well, to be honest. Um, I'm not saying that he literally bound me and didn't allow me to to be who I wanted to be. He definitely allowed me to be who I wanted to be, if I'm being honest. But I did feel trapped in a lot of cases because there was something inside of me that just wasn't coming. Coming out. And if I'm being honest, on our departure, she came out. Mm. And it feels beautiful. And I felt like at the moment it's just been covered with, 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 with the things of God, and I just feel so safe and content in that. You know, that's yeah. wonderful. Well, the Lord is near the brokenhearted. So yes, whenever you're going through something of that nature, he he draws even closer to you. And it's one thing that is so important for people who are experiencing any kind of pain or any kind of suffering. I remember there's a story in the Bible of the lepers and Jesus healing the lepers. And with leprosy, you know, people didn't want to look at you, touch you. You had to yell, you were unclean. So on top of him, like healing this awful disease, he touched the leper. And it was so important that he did that because that was Jesus addressing his real need of affection, of compassion, of love, because he hadn't been touched. No one could touch him. And I don't know how long these people went without being touched, but it's like sometimes you just need a person to see you and to touch you and to heal the emotional wounds as well as, you know, the spiritual side. So who in your life have you been leaning on in this time? I've been leaning on God. (laughs) <laughs> I've really been leaning on God. Um, are you talking about someone literally a real? Well, you know, after sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I definitely know you've been leaning on God. But what God does is he sends, uh, is people. He sends people. He's yeah. always going to be there for you. But you sometimes you do need that physical touch or that physical person. And he sends his people Absolutely. to do that for you, especially because when it comes to divorce, sometimes people can say some awful things or you have to answer a lot of uncomfortable questions with people, family, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. So, you know. Yeah, you're right. You know, there, there's actually been a few people that God has sent my way um, and who perhaps even was always there, but I guess we didn't have that relationship or that 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 connection okay. until, I guess, a circumstance happens and you realize that, wow, this is really important. I would actually even say Suzanne. If it's Suzanne. <laughs> Susan, she's here. <laughs> but Susan and I have been praying, like prayerful woman. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my closest friends, Renee as well. Renee is also a woman of God. And, you know, there's been very few people, or no one at all, who's actually said, Chanel, do you think you're making the right decision? I think because they all knew the personal story behind it. You know, most people will hear, oh my God, I'm going to get in a divorce. They, like, they will be like vouching for, for the marriage to keep on. Most people co-signed my decision. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously I can't delve into the details, but once you unravel it as an outsider hearing, they'll be like, Chanel, how are you, how are you coping? Are you okay? This isn't normal. So when I did tell the people close to me that this is where I'm going, everyone, mom, everybody s- supported me, you know. Um, but people have also been very respectful, which I appreciate that. People have been respectful in a sense where they've let us work out our own decisions of what we want for ourselves. No one has really badly influenced me. I've just had a handful of people pray with me and understand me. So, And also my therapist as well, I think starting therapy was what made me make such a harsh decision I would have carried on living a very (laughs) mediocre and unhappy life Mm -hmm. forever for you know the end of it or whatever Mm -hmm. um if my therapist didn't let me understand that what I am going through is unnormal in a Christian marriage because she is a Christian therapist specifically Mm -hmm. it's not normal in a Christian marriage and you've tried everything you have and it's not quite shifting this is where you're going to be you need to just accept that or do what your heart feels you to do my pastor as well Mm -hmm. like seriously you'd be so surprised because I do have I have Christians around me and I thank God for that I have Christians interceding it's a blessing it's such a (laughs) blessing friends family members 
And so they give me the godly advice. They give me the biblical truth and honesty. But at the same time, they're like, Shina, we don't want to see you dead at the same time. <laughs> we don't want you hurt and done because this is where it's leading to. My my parents are divorced. So I grew up in a house with my mother yeah. and we've had these conversations a lot. Mm -hmm. Some of the questions I asked mm -hmm. you and hearing it from her, it was very difficult mm -hmm. to make these decisions because of how, you know, God may see it, how she's feeling, what she's experiencing. And then, of course, her children, mm -hmm. the things that we were exposed to and experiencing. And that for her was what was a driving force was actually us. Yeah. How have your children been coping with everything this, that's happening? This is it. You know, I hated the dynamic that was around them. They didn't serve it. The main reason why I had to step away or at least separate, because that was my first request. We need to just separate mm -hmm. because this toxicity is mm -hmm. what I grew up under. My parents were also mm -hmm. divorced as well. Okay. And that's what birthed a lot of the anger in me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and seeing my mom as well become a single mother at the time, my elder sister had moved out, so it was just me and her. But um, she was also going for a very, through a very interesting transformation when she divorced my dad as well. She became this hip girl. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy for her. Like, kind of what I'm going through. <laughs> I saw my mom go through that period okay. as well, which was good for her. But okay. on the other front, she was working yes. late nights and, you know, having to take charge and seeing her in that state and... I picked up so much that of that from her, and mm -hmm. she didn't do it in on purpose. No, you know, you just it's survival, survival <laughs> mode. That you switch into survival yeah. mode, and you do what you have to do. But that became normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know a lot of that, and the anger, the things that I was talking about earlier on, was birthed from what I picked up from my mom and dad, constantly seeing them fighting. I just remember constantly, constantly fighting, constantly fighting uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. It's very traumatizing. It is. And I was like, God forbid my children go through what I went through. I don't want them to, to have that. We need to, it's either, we need to, this needs to stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need, because I don't want them picking it up. That's not the lifestyle I want for them. No, and, and even seeing you like that and remembering you as that and, yes, you know, thinking exactly. of you in that way. So and that's, thinking that's OK to, you know, when they marry, it's normal to bring that to their household. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. So you talked about reinventing yourself and you've reinvented yourself in a lot of ways. Tell us a little bit about how you have reinvented yourself as a person physically, yeah. emotionally and always. I would say a huge part of my reinvention is, I mean, the obvious, my weight loss. <laughs> Um, so tell us about your weight loss journey. My weight loss journey has been the best thing I've ever done for myself. I had weight loss surgery, the gastric bypass, and I've lost a total of 12 stones, which is like 160 pounds, I believe. Wow. I went from a size UK size okay. 28. I'm not sure of the conversion to now a UK size 14 in a year and some change. Wow. I'm still reducing. I love my lifestyle because I eat whatever. What do you mean you eat? <laughs> I eat as in I eat whatever, but I, I get full quickly. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, okay. you know, um, as in I eat everything. <laughs> that I love to eat. I love a good, I God, I love a good meal. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all portioned, okay. small, and I just feel so light. Mm -hmm. I feel so energetic. It's nice to just feel free, you know, um, a lot of the weight I was carrying wasn't even just physical weight. It was spiritual weight. That's why I couldn't even pray. Mm -hmm. I remember like Suzanne who's here always used to say, Shana, are you praying? Mm -hmm. Shana, are you praying? For a long time I was like, oh, I probably am not. But now I'm praying so much more. I don't even know. I feel like the weight I was carrying was also a spiritual weight. And it was also obviously a physical weight. And when I started to get lighter in my body, then I started to feel free. It's supernatural, I can't even explain. <laughs> but that process is really, the whole process of weight loss is really shedding all that weight, has taken a lot of weight off my shoulders, literally. And, and, and I think the whole weight loss thing, of course, you can see the physical 
but it's way more than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just can't explain it. <laughs> was weight something that you've struggled with your entire life? Entire life. Okay. Entire life. And was it bullied for it? And, you know, um, even some would, would say, you know, that certain, I would never like find a, a, a husband and stuff because of, my weight and stuff, which I don't believe. I think confidence and knowing who you are, no matter your size, is what's going to get you the right life partner, so mm -hmm. to speak. But, but did that impact you when you were, when you met your husband in terms of I like... My husband, I was a lot smaller. You were smaller. Okay. <laughs> I was bigger than this, but mm -hmm. I wasn't as big as I had gotten. I see. Um, but it, it's a mental thing, right? Especially yes. being bullied and all of that. Even yes. if you're a certain size, you may still not think that you're, you're still worthy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did that, did that impact you at all? Absolutely. And I mean, for me, I did work on my confidence to the best that I could. And it's actually inspired millions, actually, when, when, when we're talking about my plus size fashion journey Absolutely. and people just being inspired to try out new things and, and you know, dress differently. And just yes. that's been a huge part. But if I'm being completely honest and I don't mean to kind of step out of the plus size realm, but. I feel better now. I feel much better now. Um, I'm still plus size. If we're, if we're talking about, you know, the, the fashion world, I'm still yeah. considered plus size or whatever. Um, but I guess I'm a petite plus size now, whatever. <laughs> but I know I feel much better now than I did when I was at my heaviest. Um, there was a lot I was carrying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it something that you had planned to do before? Yes. Okay. So this is something you've been talking about and thinking about and, and planning for, for a while. Absolutely. And okay. I did share it with my subscribers. Yes, you guys see me confident and happy and working with what I have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with, you know, my fashion choices, et cetera, but I will consider weight loss surgery. I've never undermined mm -hmm. anyone who wants to work on, on their selves. And that's exactly what I intended to do. But what was the final decision factor for going through with the surgery? Was it because you weren't losing it the way you wanted to? What was the, the driving force behind going to surgery? I've always wanted to, to feel lighter and feel smaller because if you look at my structure, I mean, when I walked in, you're like, oh my God, you're tiny. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually really little. People are so tiny. People I was not so expecting tall. that. <laughs> I don't know why everyone says that. Oh my God, I thought you was like tall. Tall. I thought you were tall. like five, three. I think I'm even smaller now since losing the weight. Um, so frame wise, I was feeling very stocky, if I'm being honest. I was feeling okay. very stocky and just uncomfortable. Okay. And um, I wanted to tap into that and, 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 I was having issues with consistently, you know, eating healthy and mm -hmm. sticking to a, a healthy, you know, exercise or whatever. The, I, I was, I've always gone on all these different diets and all these different weight loss methods and failed at it. Mm -hmm. And um, a relative of mine did the surgery as well over 10 years ago and it's changed her life. Um, and they done it because of medical reasons, diabetes. Okay. I mm -hmm. thank God didn't have that issue, but I mean, the way I was going, who knows what could have happened as well. So that again was another factor. And then as well, my children, mm -hmm. I went one time, I took my little boy to Legoland and, um, oh, this, I'll never forget that day. There was a ride he wanted to go on and you have to go with the parent. And I looked at the ride and I was like, we can't go. I can't fit on that ride. It was devastating. He was crying like mommy because his friend went on it with his mom. And even my friend, thank God she's not a judgmental, awful person. She's like, Shan, come, let's do this. I was like, Mickey, I can't. I can't. I'm not going to go on the ride. I don't want to embarrass myself. And my little boy was crying. I was like, I can't have this. I want to take my little boys and rides and run around the park with them. So my children as well was a, a big factor as to why... I needed to lose the weight and be there for them and live long for them and all of that, you know? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, that's that's something a lot of people don't think about, all the different things that your weight can affect. Yeah. Especially, you know, your children and how they see. Now, is it something that is also in your family? Like, do, does your sister also or your mother, other people around My, you struggle yeah. with the weight? We are a big girl family. Okay. <laughs> okay. So some my of it is just My mom was a big lady. She's lost weight. My mom, my, my grandma was a big woman. Well, mm -hmm. she's, rest in peace, grandma. <laughs> grandma was um, a, a big woman. Um, my mom, her sister, my sister. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's on my mom's side. Now that you are stepping into this new chapter and you have a, a different look physically, you have a different look spiritually because of your relationship with God and, you know, you're doing different hairstyles. I love that blonde look you did on your birthday. Oh so, cute. so cute. How can people who are coming out of traumatic situations like this or devastating situations like this, how can they reinvent themselves? Like what, where did you have to start in order to get to this happy person that we see today? It starts with the inner work. I mean, therapy has helped me, but you don't, it doesn't have to just be therapy. I think it's discovering the issues about yourself that you want to work on and tackling them one by one. The inner part of yourself that, okay, this is, this is what is here and mm -hmm. it's bothering me. Let me start to work on that or at least address it. Mm -hmm. Mine was through therapy because there was so much discoveries from my past trauma as a child, etc. that kind of brought out so many things that was clearly a disturbance to me. Um, otherwise it was all hidden and I didn't realize. So the inner work definitely needs to take place. The outer work helps as well. Okay. Once you start doing things that you love, mm -hmm. like I start going on little trips with yourself, it doesn't need to be solo. It might be with a few girlfriends. It might even be with your other half, your your husband um, or, you know, someone, your significant other. Mm -hmm. um, stepping out of your comfort zone, perhaps, and doing new things. And then also, um, I think a big part of it as well was makeup and hair and changed up my style I've gone through so many different styles to find a kind of finalize you know what I like everything it is what it is and that's okay yeah it's okay <laughs> I I do I'm I can be very versatile in mm -hmm. my personal style mm -hmm. I could be like blonde hair mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> be funky and just like extra and then I could be very much let's get into this corporate role yes. <laughs> not, not corporate too yes. much but you know just a bit chic yeah. and stylish. And then I can be a little bit, you know, mummy mm -hmm. with my, you know, my joggers and my leggings and stuff. And, you know, like a baggy, cute little lounge jumper. I don't know. So I discovered those like little styles about myself as well. I love to wear different wigs personally. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's been a very interesting journey and just realizing that you don't actually need to stick to one thing. You can do it all if you want to. And that's how I am. Yeah. That's great. No, I think that's so powerful and it's so important for people to see how you're kind of coming out of this space and you've been very transparent and open and talking with people about where you are right now. Yeah. Do you see yourself getting remarried in the future? Yes. Yeah. So you still believe in love and marriage? I do. I really, really do. I did share that recently on the channel. I said, you know, I'm happy to remarry because I would love, I love marriage is beautiful. It's not easy. I don't think it's going to be smooth sailing <laughs> from start to finish. Um, but I've learned so much. I've learned so much on complementing your other half. Mm. I think where our issue is, was was we complicate complementing each other. When you, you say complementing, you're talking about who you are as a person, not actual compliments, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who you are as sure. compliment each other as in like... Uh, okay. The chemistry, sure. it's so important to assess that and that that connection. I want a best friend. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say my previous marriage, I was best friends with him. We were just partners doing whatever together. And that's it. I actually would like something a bit deeper okay. with my potential <laughs> future husband. Um, so remarriage is definitely something that I'm, I'm praying for and putting before God. What advice would you give to a woman who is in a place where she's feeling shame and rejection mm -hmm. after coming out of a divorce? Because I did do a interview with a woman who was a pastor who had gone through a divorce and we talked oh. about it and it was very difficult for her. But the comments that I received under that video and the comments that she says that she receives from people were very negative they were not supportive I was quite surprised that people 
people were just saying that, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have been divorced because now you're going to be committing adultery if you get remarried and just a lot of nasty things. And I was really surprised because the divorce rate here in America is 50%. So divorce is a very common thing that yes, Christians and everyone experiences, right? So to be so nasty and make it appear like this is something so unusual was very shocking to me to read. I'm so, so saddened to hear that. It was awful. You know, did you, ugh, I don't mean to go into a whole topic, but did you hear about the, I think she was a, a gospel singer, a Nigerian gospel singer who was murdered by her pastor husband. No. Yeah. What? She could have run for her life. But I'm sure she stuck with all of what everyone else was mm -hmm. saying. Those type of comments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we put ourselves in different dangerous situations because we don't want to disappoint the people outside. I feel that you would know your gut and your intuition. And the Holy Spirit will guide you in the right decision for yourself. Some people get into marriages without the guidance of God and without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So then you're here in something mm -hmm. where you are completely you're not even meant to be there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I honestly do feel that that might have been the case with me mm -hmm. as I've gone deeper into the spirit and really understood from the beginning and where it really was in the beginning with us was I really meant to get into that I had to really ask that question mm. and so if there's an do I want to say opportunity Maybe not opportunity, but it, when there's a realization about yourself and the situation you're in to come out of it, I think it's, especially when you know it's a danger zone, mm -hmm. I think I, I wouldn't, I'm not advising anyone to do whatever because I mean, everyone has the free will. And this is one thing that God, God has given us the beautiful word, but he's also given us our free will. Yes. And. Therefore, for people who say in that God has given you your free will to come out of something that you believe is not good for you, is dangerous for you. And the example I just made of, of women literally losing their lives for staying in marriages because of the religious factor, not even because of the godly or the spiritual factor, because of religion. They're just staying in this rule and doctrine is killing themselves internally and in some cases physically and you don't want to die you, you can't come and die oh. <laughs> <laughs> honestly no that's that's powerful and just to give a final word yeah. what are the ways that you have been spending time with God during this time? Because people may hear you and they're like, you know what? I do need to get closer to God. I do need to hear from the Holy Spirit. I do need to reconnect. I don't know what happened, but I lost God. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that they can practically do that? What are some ways that you cultivate and spend time with God for him to draw near to you and to heal you? Um, I believe in creating the atmosphere around your household or wh wherever you're, you're we spend the most time in, whether it's at the car. I play Daffy Tiki's. Oh, I was telling, we yes. were talking about that the other day, isn't it? I yes. love his piano worship. Yes. It's anointed, it's truly. It's beautiful. It's almost constantly playing in my house. I love Cindy, Dr. Cindy Trim. Yes. Um, her prayers. Are powerful. Night. I leave it in a, a room next door. Yes. And it's just anointing my house. So being in that atmosphere for worship is so important. And of course, there's so much material out there that I like to you to to um, listen to. I go to church as well. I have a church which is helpful, and I have Christian friends and that to guide me. But material, as in like Cindy Trim books, um, and then also having a prayer journal. Oh my God, every Christian woman needs a prayer journal. Like my my daily journal is letters to Jesus, dear Jesus. Even if I'm angry, I write, I'm so annoyed because this and this and that happened. Father, help me. I I have to journal my entire <laughs> everything. So that's a great way to outlet. It you know. really, that's so powerful. I think people really don't realize what happens when you do that. Not only are you releasing, but it gives God a chance to speak back to you. Yes. And you're able to see the growth and the things that you've experienced. Yeah. And it really does help. Yeah. That is so powerful. Is there anything else that 
you think it's absolutely important that people I think can learn from? It's, it's important to surround yourself with the right people as well. And I think you would know, because some people just tolerate you know, negative people, get rid of them, or at least spend less time with them if you can't, or at least just not digest their mm-hmm. negative and bad vibes. Mm-hmm. I think I would rather be alone than have someone that's spewing any type of hate, gossip, mm-hmm. or just evil yeah. <laughs> into my spirit. I just can't take it. And you shouldn't. So, yeah. No one should tolerate that, especially if you want to develop your relationship with God. And I mean, we're not perfect as well, but you know, we can try to, to in the eyes of God, not sin. <laughs> it's not easy because you know we sin all the time and stuff. But try. God wants us to 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 remain pure, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so that He can talk to us and and stuff. And yeah, that's very important as well. And God just put on my heart to ask you this when you brought up the issue of sin and just healing. Have you forgiven your ex-husband? I have. I have forgiven because um, I feel like that's the only way we can, because I still (laughs) say unfortunate, but it is what it is. I have to, we have a child together. Um, I had to ask God to really help me to forgive him. Um, I won't lie to some things. I'm like, man, why are we here? Why do I have to deal with this? But then, you know what? I can't even forget his character. He was a nice guy. I'll be honest. He wasn't a horrible person. Um, And God reminds me of that. I know you had, you know, not the greatest experience with him for the most part. But he's also a Christian man. And God has to remind me as well. He's also my son. And when you start to realize that no one's perfect then of course forgiveness is very, very, very important. And again, we've got a young one to raise together, although we're not living on with each other. Mm-hmm. And that's been important for me to understand that I have to I have to forgive and move on. Well, for wonderful. my own happiness as well. Absolutely. It's it's wonderful that you have because un- unfortunately unforgiveness opens up the door for so many negative things mm-hmm. to come into your life. Mm-hmm. As difficult as it is, because it is so difficult. But it's necessary and it's important for you and for your son. So yeah. it's wonderful that you've been able to do that and that God has helped you with that. And mm-hmm. you're just blossoming into this brand new Chanel that we love to see. We love to Thank see you. you. You're Thank so you. beautiful. You're inspiring. You're brave. You're just a breath of fresh air. I think everyone can say that when they watch your channel, that <laughs> you just make us smile. And Thank you. So Thank grateful you. that you came here. Can you let us know where we can find you on the Internet? So I am on YouTube, um, my YouTube channel, Chanel Boating. Um, I'm also on Instagram. My Instagram page um, name is not t- changing. You could probably still type Chanel Boating and find me though. What so is your Instagram name? Is at Chanel Ambrose, <laughs> which is my married name. I'm currently rebranding. Instagram won't let me change it. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> but you can still okay. find Chanel Ambrose and still find me there. And Or it's, you can even type Chanel Boating and you'll find me there. So Instagram... Um, I'm on TikTok doing whatever. <laughs> Chanel Boating on TikTok. And then my website, chanelboating.com. You'll probably be able to find everything there. Also have a Patreon as well, which is a very lovely community and building of positive um, women, you know, who are looking, to, again, to transform their lives and just support each other, etc. So, yeah. That's beautiful. So, Chanel, are you ready for some rapid fire questions? well buckle your seatbelt girl we have some rapid fire questions save 100 people or one loved one one loved one your favorite oh Oh. save 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 what did you think i said oh i thought you just said save okay um oh my god that's hard that's hard one love I, that's one. what I said. Rapid one fire. Lo- one. Rapid. I'm just so long. <laughs> one love one. One love one. Okay. Oh, I'm so selfish. <laughs> it's not selfish. You're still saving someone. Your favorite woman in the Bible. Um. Woman, any woman in the Bible. Do you know any woman? Girl, do you read your Bible? <laughs> this is so embarrassing. <laughs> 
I'm okay. gonna say Eve, man. <laughs> Eve. No, we all hate her, don't we? <laughs> it's because of you we have to go for child labor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Esther. Esther, okay. Yes. Thank God for Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> she's my spiritual life. <laughs> Favorite hairstyle on yourself? I know that's hard. I love a bob. A bob. I've got a bob right now. It's cute. It, it suits you. I think that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> Your favorite dessert? Um, an apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite vacation spot? Um, a beach. Favorite thing to cook? Um, a Benquine. Oh, wow. I love a mutual and a Benquine. Wow, I was not expecting that, nice girl. and palm up soup. Yum. <laughs> Your favorite color to wear? Um, like a, a cream. Cream. Or brown. Okay, neutrals. Neutrals. Favorite nail polish color? <laughs> brown. It's like a brown, a brown girl nude. nude. Like a nude shade. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that color. Favorite movie of all time? Coming to America. Your favorite place to shop? Um, ASOS. Okay. <laughs> if you had to give the rest of your earnings that you will ever make the rest of your life to any charity, what would you pick? Like, what kind of a charity would you give all of your money to? Like a single mother, child type of charity. Oh, that's beautiful. Foundation or concealer? Foundation. Coffee or tea? Oh, tea. You're from London. You have to say that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Nude lip or red lip? Girl, a nude these days. A nude these days. <laughs> Physical gifts or compliments? Physical, no. Com compliments. Com Me neither, you know. <laughs> oh, you don't want any? Um, I like experiences. <laughs> that was not an option. <laughs> I don't know what was... <laughs> Okay. You I don't love, want I it. Think, I, think, I think physical gifts. Physical yeah. gifts. Okay. And how do you want to be remembered? I said this in my thing before. The woman or the girl who transformed her life. You want to be remembered as a woman who transformed her life. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Chanel, for coming and sharing your story and just inspiring us to find ourselves and find God again after going through so many different things that life brings us. And we're just we're just happy to see you happy. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Thank you. You're so welcome. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Introducing Silent Storm, The Fragrance, fine forever.